Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's now talk about the digestive system of cockroach. So first we will look at the different parts or the different organs which together form the digestive system. So this system basically will help to digest all the food materials which the cockroach eats. So for that, first let us know what is the type of nutrition for cockroach. The cockroach are omnivorous, that is they feed on both plants as well as animals. So they are like human beings, which eat both plants and animals with holozoic nutrition. Holozoic nutrition means intake of solid food. So they take solid food. For example, they can feed on hair, they can feed on small insects, they can also feed on some like cooked food particles. So it feeds on these kind of holozoic food, that is solid food. Now talking about the digestive system, broadly the digestive system is classified into three parts. Now whenever I talk about the digestive system, I basically talk, I'm basically talking about the digestive tract, right? What is the digestive tract? Digestive tract is also known as gut or alimentary canal. So these are different names of the digestive tract. So the digestive tract is also known as gut and this is also known as alimentary canal. So in this digestive tract, you have different organs. Now, the entire digestive tract in case of cockroach is divided into three parts. Foregut, midgut and hindgut. So foregut, midgut and hindgut are the three parts of the digestive tract. Now, what are the organs that together form the foregut? Foregut means something which is lying on the former end. So on the starting end. That is foregut. So foregut includes mouth, pharynx, esophagus, crop and gizzard. So these are the organs which together form the foregut. So your mouth starts from here, right? So this is your mouth, uh, this is your mouth and then comes the pharynx somewhere here. Then the tube-like structure that is the esophagus and this hollow structure for storage of food that is crop and then comes the gizzard this is gizzard so till gizzard is your foregut so starting from here to the gizzard somewhere till here is your foregut after that is your midgut and then the last one is hindgut so where is your midgut so this portion after this gizzard after this swollen structure, you see a tube-like structure that is nothing but your midgut. And what is hindgut? Hindgut is nothing but ileum, colon and rectum. So these together form the hindgut. So where is the ileum? This part is ileum. This is colon and this is rectum so basically this portion so the portion starting from here till the end is the hind gut clear so that this is your entire digestive tract so starting from your mouth till the anus is your entire digestive tract or the alimentary canal so now we will see that the food intake happens through mouth so food is taken inside through mouth and the waste materials or the undigested food is given out through the anus. Now we have to look at the entire process in between these two. What happens between mouth and anus? How is the food digested? So you, as, you can, as it is very clear from the picture that the alimentary canal in case of cockroach is quite long. So lengthwise it is yes. It is quite long and that is why it is distinctly divided into foregut, midgut and hindgut. So now we will talk about each of these parts and their function in detail. So let us start our discussion with mouth. 
So mouth is that part through which the food enters into the body. So that is mouth. So now once the food enters into the mouth, where does it go? It goes to the pharynx. So where is pharynx? Pharynx is somewhere here. So this is the pharynx which is a very short muscular tube and it enables the swallowing of food. For example, in human beings also, in, in our body also we have a pharynx and because of the presence of the pharynx, we are able to swallow the food. What happens when you swallow a food? You feel as if the food gets, food slips inside your, through your throat. There is something, it is very slimy or slippery. Something slippery is there in your throat because of which you are able to swallow it very easily. That is because of the glands present in the pharynx. That is pharyngeal glands which secrete mucus to make the food soft. So the food becomes soft and also it becomes uh, uh, smooth to get inside. This entire foregut is lined by cuticle that is a waxy layer to prevent loss of water. So this is about the pharynx. Now why is the pharynx muscular in nature? It is because of this muscular nature that it is able to move the food downwards because if there are muscles in, in present in the pharynx, those muscular contraction and expansion will help in the movement of the food downward. Next part is esophagus. Esophagus is nothing but the food pipe. So this is your pharynx, a very sm small portion and then later the tube-like structure is nothing but esophagus. So this is the food pipe, its function is simple, it carries the food to crop, crop is the next organ. So basically it acts as a medium to carry the food. Next part is crop, so crop is nothing but this swollen structure which is present towards the end of the esophagus. So it is a sac-like structure. It is the largest part of alimentary canal. So if you look at the picture itself, you see pharynx is only this much portion. Esophagus again is only this much portion. But if you look at crop, it is like it occupies a lot of portion of the digestive tract. So it is the largest part of the alimentary canal. What is its function? It is the temporary food storage area. Now, when the cockroach is eating food, so maybe it is eating a lot of food altogether. So all that food needs to be stored somewhere because that exact process of digestion, that process happens only in the intestine. Now, we do not want all the food to get into the intestine at once because then it will be difficult for the intestine to digest the food. So, we want the foods to be stored somewhere temporarily so that as and when needed, some amount of it can be sent to the intestine for digestion and absorption. So, crop is nothing but that temporary food storage area. So, it, it also help, ensures better mixing of food. That is when we eat food, for example, forget about a cockroach, think of a human being. What happens when we eat food? The food is like quite solid. Right? So what do we do? As soon as we put it inside our mouth, we start chewing it with our tree, teeth. So basically we want to grind it. We want to break it into smaller pieces. Then we swallow it. So when it passes through the pharynx, the pharyngeal glands secrete mucus which makes the food even more soft. Now this soft food then gets inside our stomach. Then so many enzymes act on it and the process of digestion starts taking place. Similarly in this case, the food which the cockroach eats, it needs to be broken down into simpler substances. It needs to be into a simpler form. So that is what is facilitated in each and every part. So in crop also, it ensures better mixing of food so that the food is well mixed and it is in a simpler form. What happens after crop? It gets into the gizzard. Gizzard is a highly muscular structure. So this is this structure which you see here, this one. This is gizzard. 
So it helps in grinding the food with the help of highly chitinous teeth present on the inner wall. Now if you compare a cockroach with a human being, in human beings we have teeth present inside our mouth. So the grinding of the food happens in the mouth itself. But in case of cockroach, there is nothing like that. So no grinding happens with the help of teeth. So that grinding job takes place in the gizzard because inside the gizzard teeth are present which are made up of chitin. Chitin makes them strong and rigid. So it helps in filtering food with the help of seed like structure present below the teeth. So if you look at the structure of gizzard they have teeth to grind the food. Now below the teeth they also have a sieve like structure that is a net like structure something like this which have small pores. So it helps in filtering the food as well. A stomodial valve is present between gizzard and midgut to prevent backward movement of food. Now gizzard is the last part of the foregut. So after gizzard, midgut starts. So between gizzard and midgut, there is a valve which is known as stomodial valve. What is the function of this valve? It will prevent backward movement of food because the food is coming down, right? And what do we want? We want the food to go down. So this is the preferred direction of the movement of food. So there has to be something which will prevent the food from going up. So that is why we have a valve here which prevents the food from moving backward that is the food should not move from gizzard to crop and then to esophagus so that will create a problem right because still now the food has not reached that particular area where actual process of digestion will take place so let us see what happens after the food passes through the gizzard so after this it enters into the mid gut so mid gut is the main site of digestion and absorption so let us now talk about the midgut. So this is the main site of digestion and absorption. So till now in the foregut, what, were we, what was being done? The food was taken in and then the food was actually taken to the main site where digestion will take place. So that was facilitated by the foregut. In midgut, the actual digestion will happen. This is also known as mesentron. Mesentron is another name of midgut. So what is present here in the midgut? Six to eight finger-like structures are present at the junction of foregut and midgut. So the foregut ends here where the gizzard ends, right? So this is the junction of foregut and midgut because the midgut starts from here. So at this junction, if you see there were some not thread-like, in, instead these are finger-like, thicker than thread. So these are some structures which are present. So what are these structures called? They are known as hepatic cicae. They secrete digestive juices which help in digestion. So these structures basically they secrete some juices which will help in the process of digestion. The food is enclosed in a mesh like membrane which is also known as peritropic membrane. So whatever is the food which is which needs to be digested they are enclosed in a membrane which is called the peritropic membrane. So now you know how the process of digestion start at midgut. It is because uh, the hepatic he say secrete digestive juices which will start the process of digestion. Now this entire mid gut is internally lined by glandular epithelium, epithelium which also secrete digestive juices. So here if you see this, enti this entire portion is your mid gut. So this is internally lined by glandular epithelium. So that glandular epithelium means epithelial cells which which act like glands so they secrete enzymes or uh, some other substances so these glandular epithelium secrete digestive juices 
Now, why do we have this peritropic membrane? It's because the peritropic membrane prevents or protects the wall of midgut from hard food particles. Let us suppose these are the food particles. Now, if these food particles directly inter directly come into the midgut, they might, if there is something very hard in these food particles, they might strike to the wall of the midgut and it can harm the midgut. So these are enclosed in a membrane. This membrane is known as peritropic membrane. So now the peritropic membrane will prevent the food particles from directly interacting with the wall of the midgut. Okay, so let us now talk about hindgut. Now hindgut starts from here. So this onwards starts the hindgut. Now if you look at the junction between hindgut and midgut, this is the junction. Here again you see some thread like structures present. So these are nothing but malfugian tubules which are present here. So what are these malfugian tubules? These are filament like structures. So here you can see they are quite thin, almost like a thread. So they are a ring of 100 to 150 filaments present. So, so many filaments are present at this junction. So what is the purpose of this hindgut? Removal of excretory products from hemolymph. So now in case of cockroach, cockroach belongs to arthropoda. So they have hemolymph. So they have open circulatory system. I mean the, um, the blood is not within the blood vessels. So as a result, blood is scattered everywhere and blood and the lymph get mixed mixed up and that is why the liquid is called hemolymph so these malfugian tubules will try to remove the excretory products from the hemolymph now comparing the hind gut with the mid gut hind gut is wider than the mid gut mid gut is um, narrower a muscular sphincter is prevent to is present to prevent the entry of undigested food from hind gut to mid gut so where do you have this muscular sphincter somewhere here so here you also have a sphincter which will not allow the substances to move from hind gut to mid gut now talking about the hind gut again you have three parts the uppermost part is the ileum so this uppermost part is ileum. The next part is colon. And the last one is rectum. So these are the three parts of hindgut. So basically midgut will help in the process of digestion and absorption of the digested food. Now not all the food will get digested. Some amount of food will remain undigested. So what will happen to that undigested food? It will go to the hindgut and from hindgut it will pass through ileum, colon and rectum and finally it will be excreted out through the anus. So this is how the entire process of digestion. So as I said they have three parts, ileum, colon and rectum. So ileum is nothing but a short narrow tube Colon is a highly coiled tube. So if you see, this is a coiled structure. And rectum, it opens to the exterior to and So th these are the things which I have already explained to you. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.